That's awesome. Um, so as we ramp up getting ready to talk about this new record, um, Daniel and I are, and I keep making mention to Daniel, he's behind the camera, but... You know, Hi, Daniel. <laughs> <Hello there. laughs> We're songwriters as well, and um, so what's your favorite method of writing songs? Do you write lyrics first, or is it always about the melody first? Um, well, it, it all comes and goes in different forms, but, but it's it's... It's hopefully always about the story. Yeah. Always about. I try to keep a through line on every song, and and that to me is more lyrically based. Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning how to bring musical hooks back into it to keep it keep it going like that as well. Um, but but it's it's a it's a process. It's like, you know, learning how to learning how to build a table. Yeah. Your first table is probably going to be pretty good you know mm -hmm. like you've, you if, you if you think you're a pretty good table builder you're gonna go go for it yeah you know but but after a while you, you learn that you had inconsistencies with the the grain you didn't cut it the right way and then it's a little shaky on the legs and this one this leg kind of bounces and then the stains all wrong um, uh, so you know and I didn't even sand it yeah. at all <laughs> but it, so you get into it and by the time yeah. you want to make a fine piece of furniture you've learned how to how to take the steps necessary mm -hmm. to get there and I think songwriting can be can be used in that analogy as well. I mean, you you start off with a melody you like, and and the next thing you know, you've used the same melody that you like throughout the whole song, and it's boring. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you have I to learn that. how to change it up. Yeah. Um, and the chords are all the same, and I've ch and I've changed the melody, but the chords are all the same now. So how can I mm -hmm. change the chords? And um, so it may start with lyrics, but it but it's gotten to the point to where it, it ends, and sometimes a totally different place. Which yeah. is why I've enjoyed recruiting songwriters to help me, which I've never done. I'd never done in the past. Yeah, it's all. It was hard. It was always hard for me when I first started doing that to, to yeah. get outside of that. Well, you're so close to, to your else. tunes. You Absolutely. don't. You, you know. You especially the ones that you write top to bottom. You're like, why would I, you know, show this to somebody? It's already done. Yeah. yeah. And um, but getting out there to be a part of a, a process from the beginning really helps you. Mm -hmm stretch out a bit. So. Well, yeah, I was curious about that. I was I was wondering, for, you know, for this record, if you were thinking of the Nashville, you know, script. Um, because I, I don't hear a lot of the Nashville slick, sure. you know, on your on your record. It's more it's more homegrown sure. for me. Well, it, it's um, it, the recording process started in, in North Carolina at Crossroads where Balsam Range does all their stuff. Yeah. And, um, and it ended here. And then we mixed it at Southern Ground. So um, it went from from their commercial rig to my home rig to mm -hmm. our commercial rig. Yeah. So it, it started it started off clean. It got dirty in the middle, and we cleaned it up at the end. Yeah. And and we didn't um, we didn't make too many harsh decisions. You know, some things were left completely alone. Mm -hmm. Some things were edited a little bit to make it tighter, and uh, just depending on the tune, really. Um, but most of all, I think. Uh, None of it was really done in Nashville except yeah. the mixing, um, and I and I know what you mean by that 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 sound. Uh, and uh, some of the writing was done in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've I've come I've come up with uh, a couple of these with with some buddies of mine. Uh, Rory Feek helped on one from Joey and Rory. Uh, Be my uh, girl. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Jeff Hyde from Eric Church Band helped on oh, nice. on I Will Lay Me Down, and. Um, you know, I had Zach sing one with me. Levi helped me write and sing one. Oh, Levi's such um, a powerhouse. Yeah, he's so great. Oh, that yeah. song, for some reason, uh, it's called "How Could I," and it it, it just re for some reason it pulls out images of the Civil War or something. It's, oh yeah, it's got to be that old, you know, sound uh, like a, a, a Burns, Ken Burns documentary or something like well, that. Well, it, it feels like um, to me that one is um, is really a. A reassurance to my family that, that I would never do them wrong um, you know how could I ever hurt you yeah kind of thing and so um you know it, it takes on different forms the way that Levi brings this this haunting thing to it. Yeah. buddy buddy and Levi have a nice harmony going on the fiddles there That's awesome. um, but getting the chance to do this with, with so many friends who, who sat in and were a part of it um, was another big exciting part for me because I you know I, I'm they're songs that wouldn't have gotten finished or mm -hmm. written if I hadn't um, enlisted their help. So wow. it's nice that 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 they're, that they're able to be a part of it, and that I'm able to to let go of of um, those uh, grasps yeah. that I have on those tunes. So, 
as laid back as you are, or as you appear to be, uh, you kick off the record with Runaway Train, and it it sounds like everything is haywire. Well, that's the that's the process of um, coming up in in the Zach Brown band. I think is where I'm I'm basically uh, speaking to that song. It, yeah, it, it's really having done this for so long, and then to have it kind of go from 2007 to 2000 to 2013 mm -hmm. in the way that it has. Um, actually, 2008 was when we hit radio. Radio changed everything. Yeah, and. Um, and that made it made us all like, uh, you know, kind of hair on fire, running down the running down the side of the road. Uh, yeah. That would have been chicken fried. Right? Yeah, yeah, chicken yeah. fried was a big was a big yeah. hit. It's still, when I look at the recurrent sales, Foundation is the biggest seller of yeah, all of the records amazing. so yeah. far. You know, yeah, people just like people like that record, and, um, and and we and we try to stay true to that to that sound and to those vibes while while trying to grow at the same time so mm -hmm. that can be tricky because um, some of the stuff that we're doing now is is out there compared to the foundation but yeah. um, some of it's right in line wow so it's and you know there's a, a line in, in runaway train in which we talked about family about the wife being mm -hmm. you know, home with another kid on the way and yeah. uh, it, it definitely ranks true uh, so would you say uh, there's some sort of theme to this record? Because I'll tell you what I picked up on. You can tell me okay. how wrong I am. So <laughs> it, it, it feels You're like... this wrong. Yeah. 22%. 22% wrong, yeah. <laughs> 22 wrong. yeah. Uh, so yeah, it feels like, you know, the cool side of it, like we were talking about being out on tour, you know, being in such a great band, and, you know, everything's going on, but it's starting to weigh a little heavy. Like, it feels like you want to step back a little bit and get a little time to yourself, do your own thing with daylight. Um, am I on the radar? Oh, there's, there's part of that yeah. for sure. I mean, I think, um, I think it's important to me to, to continue to be um, viable as an artist in my own yeah. uh, sense because a lot of, I write a lot of songs, and some of them we use in, in Zach Brown Band, and some of them we don't. Um, Zach writes a lot of songs. We we don't use all the ones he writes or the mm -hmm. ones that Wyatt writes or or Coy or Clay or anybody. We, so we come up with a, with an end all. Um, it's mostly going to be Zach's material. Obviously, it's Zach's band, That's but right. but um, but we we are very much a part of those processes. Yeah. So it, it if I, if I have other material, it needs to have a life somewhere. You need a creative sure. Out, yeah, out yeah. For so sure. bluegrass to me felt like a, a great choice because it's a nice marriage of of country and folk, and I and I've kind of got a big folk edge, but bluegrass also has some intensity to it that a lot of my rock band stuff mm -hmm. was a part of. So um, I like the the dynamic and, and the energy of bluegrass. And um, mm -hmm. when I heard Balsam on the radio, I just thought. Wow, they they sound like what I would want my band to sound like. Yeah. I wonder if they'd be interested in playing with me, and they and they were happy to. So how did that? Nice. Pro how did you? Because first of all, I tried to reach out to those guys to get a quote from them, you know, about you or whatever. Have you seen their website? It's hard to follow. <laughs> I, I can't get to anybody. So. Uh, well, I was uh, able to at least <laughs> find a contact booking at bossomrange.com or something like yeah. that. I got to Buddy that way. Okay. Um, and their the website has changed. They. They're, they're maybe in flux. Try them on Facebook too. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Didn't. Yeah. As, as yeah. big as Facebook is. I yeah. It's tough to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be. It can be even yeah. even in today's digital age, it can be tricky to find folks. Yeah. But he. Uh, but Buddy and I talked and um, uh, asked him if he'd be a, if he, they'd like to be a part of it. If I could send him some songs, they could hear it. You know. Nice. Obviously, you don't want to. You don't want to say, "Hey, I'm in this band. You guys. Yeah. You guys should come play with me." Yeah. You know. You don't want to do that. I and mean, I respect them so much as as musicians uh, you know before i even got to know them that um that i was just hoping that they wouldn't say yeah 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 contemporary country guy whatever <laughs> you know we we do bluegrass we're cool you're an idiot yeah. you know so i you know you just never know and, and these insecurities don't go away yeah I <laughs> you know it's like so you, yeah. you you get you get excited about the thought and you're like what if they don't like me you know but we got on great and yeah. um and they're super cool and um and that we we shared a lot of uh, common ideas and, and songwriting and and um, and I got to meet everybody in the band went up wow. for some rehearsals yeah. and um, we just hit it off and and they started playing it they said they're into it and um, 
the it took a year. You know, we mm -hmm. we did our first gig was at um, a benefit for John Gerard Foundation in Gainesville. Okay. And um, that went off great. We started doing some other gigs around town here and there and the other where we could just kind of play together and and, yeah. and before we get started each recording, other out yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and get, get it, used to it. Yeah. Um, so rehearsals and gigs, and uh, then uh, within a year of meeting them, we had started talking about studio stuff. That was probably, we, I think we started recording in February of last year, okay. um, of 12. And uh, we were kind of done, pressed and printed by October, and um, it took a lot of hard work because they're in Asheville. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so we'd have to meet or, you know, send files back and forth. And, yeah. Um, the Daylight track became the Daylight, the title of the record because Daylight's a track that I wrote in the 90s um, in an attempt to uh, kind of find a direction. Wow. Um, that totally throws my theory then. Yeah, because well, it, that was going along with the, the theme that I was talking about because when I hear that song, I hear uh, someone who feels maybe like they're a little bit trapped. Um, and a sense of creativity and well, want to break through. Flash back to yeah. 99 yeah. and then you're dead on. So it's still true. So yeah, <laughs> and the Brighter Shade record, yeah. you know, available on iTunes <laughs> is called <laughs> Divine Ignorance. Yeah. And, um, and that came out in 2001. Mm -hmm. So that track uh, has, you know, rock, you know, it's, it's a Brighter Shade track. Okay. So yeah. it's all rocking and, um, and the comparison is just in the intensity. Mm -hmm. The lyrics are the same, um, but the meaning to me is totally different. Daylight now is kind of a, an explanation of what what I used to feel, and the title of this record being Daylight, to me, is a way of saying, "Well, here it is. I've broken through. Wow. You know, to a bit. I'm not there. I'm not. I'm, you're never there. Mm -hmm. But but I, but I broke through a little bit. I can wow. see some of the some of the the outside. You know, yeah. the, and I'm out of my shell um, to a certain degree. So. The trap has kind of been loosened, yeah, and um, and you can let a little light in and, and, and see what see what's out there and, and see what to how, to how to explore yourself musically and, and professionally. I've always wanted to be um, recognized as a songwriter and, and a musician on a national level, and yeah. and that's that's step one, you know. And so I guess you know, as as part of the Zach Brown band, that really has has happened, and then as the solo career is mm -hmm. starting to at least be noticed. I mean, I've always tried to tell people I'm not stepping out, I'm stepping up. Oh, you wow. You know, That's I, I'm ha very happy where I am. Awesome mind, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to be um, out of my own, you know, doing this. I want to be with my guys. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. In the band. And so it's, it's cool to, uh, to be able to, to have the support from everybody in the band to, to do our own things. Coy just had a new record out. Clay's got a new record out. Oh wow! Um, you know, so okay. everybody's everybody's staying creative and doing their thing on 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 their own time, and uh, and and we're working on a new record. Zach Brown Band is. So.